Well, I was, I was, I was in the DS school. I was producing um, news shorts for an American TV channel. So I went in before the before the demonstration, actually the, the organising stage of the demonstration, and set up a video media centre there, so people could come in off the streets with their footage, edit their footage, and upload it. And the evening of the raid, which was when um, you know, the protesters kind of finished, pretty much, was dying down. You know, people were starting to leave. There was a, a feeling of repression in the Diaz school, building up and building up. And probably half the people in the school had actually left by, by midnight when the raid started. You know, when, uh, I was working, editing a film, a piece to be uploaded, sent to the States. Uh, and there were shouts of, the police are, the police are here, the police are here. Uh, and people started panicking and running around. So um, I had me, a colleague, I was working with a colleague called Marion, a German woman. She, I said to her, you know, grab the tapes, grab the equipment, and there's a space up on the roof in a water tower where you can hide. Because you know, the police, Italian police have a reputation. If, 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 you, if you film something they don't want to be filmed, they take the camera, they smash it, and they smash you too. <laughs> so you know, we thought, let's save the tapes. I went onto the roof and I filmed the police storming the building next door, you know, smashing down the gates, literally smashing the windows, just hundreds and hundreds of policemen in complete riot gear and then breaking in the doors. And I was feeling worried for my safety because I was up on this roof by myself. So I was thinking, well, the police could be in this building, they could appear at any minute, and if they find me on the roof by myself, my camera will be smashed, God knows what will happen to me. So I then went downstairs past the media centre where people were panicking still and I said calm down, calm down, the police aren't in the building yet. Went down another two stairs and this big policeman in body armour, panting, it was a very big heavy man, <laughs> coming up the stairs with his trunch. I thought the police are in the building. So I turned and fled up the stairs, up two flights of stairs and actually look at my camera, it took about 30 seconds to get up these two flights of stairs, shouting the police are in the building. So everyone started panicking even more and then I went up onto the roof where there was a police helicopter with a spotlight. So you managed to go upstairs again? Yes, yes, back onto the roof basically. Yes. Um, and I waited for the police helicopter with a spotlight to come off the roof. And then I ran to the water tower, climbed through the window, walked down this, this little corridor of these tanks. And at the li at, right at the end of the water tower, there was a place where there was a water tank missing and Marion was there with the footage. So we ended up hiding there for hours while this helicopter circled around with a spotlight and the police searched the roof. Um, you know, and the whole building was shaking from the helicopter and the spotlight would come in through the window and it was really a very surreal experience and you know, we were seriously worried if the police found us what would happen and actually if you look at what happened to other people in the building next door when the police found them they were beaten unconscious, bones broken, equipment smashed etc. So you know, it was a pretty worrying situation. Yeah. About stepping into court tomorrow as a witness, how do you feel about that? Um, well, it's nice to see that justice does happen, even if it is three or four years late, <laughs> you know, which I think has a lot to do with the Italian legal system. And you know, um, I've been witness in courts before, and I think video is a very powerful tool for justice, because mm -hmm. you know, it, it allows people to actually see what's, what's, what's actually happened, where you know, if you've just got a, the policeman saying this happened, the process saying this happened, the judges tend to believe the authority figures, where quite often, you know, it's un what they say is actually untrue. You know, so often video has been used to get people off charges because the police have made up the evidence. I don't know quite why the police are so bad, but they tend to be. You know, and video is a great tool for you know actually letting truth and justice happen. And in the case of this video here, the three minutes of video I filmed on the roof, you know, is, is key to the evidence of a getting the protesters who are all prosecuted by the police. You know, the police beat them up and you know, hospitalised them, and then they were prosecuted for actually attacking the police, which they didn't do. So the evidence actually proved that they didn't actually attack the police. And now it's coming back after four years that actually the police are being prosecuted for wounding and you know, attacking the protesters. And the video is a key part of that. I've, I think tomorrow I've got to go and testify, say, you know, I was there, I was filming, and then just back up what, I saw, what the camera saw. I've got to back it up and say, I saw it too. Did you witness any kind of aggression from the protesters to the police? Um, during the Diaz thing, no, none whatsoever. Um, I think some people did try and build barricades, but it was half-hearted. You know, it was just kind of a panic reaction. You know, what what are we going to do? You know, we're powerless. We've got to do something. Um, in in self-defense. Yeah, oh, completely self-defense. No aggression. No, no, no. Basically, it was an organising space for for the demonstration. You know, a liberal organising space. It was a media centre. So you know, there weren't any dangerous, aggressive people there. It wasn't what the space was about. Um, and the school next door. I was there two hours before the raid, and you know, it was full of 
middle class people, you know, protesters, liberal protesters, you know, young people sleeping. It was actually a space where fearful people came because they felt it was safe, because mm -hmm. yeah, it was the official organizing space. So, you know, to, to say that it was full of dangerous protesters is completely and utterly wrong. And actually, when the police raided the building, there was, there was no, 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 you know, there was nothing, you know, Nothing, there was nothing on the street that happened to them. There was nothing, you know, you could see them, they were just smashing, they were smashing the windows. They were terrifying the people in the building by smashing the windows with their truncheons and bashing at the doors with tables and things. You know, it was like a medieval siege and there was no resistance. You know, none that I saw. You know, they, they say they were attacked, they say people dropped concrete blocks from the roof, but my video footage doesn't show that. I didn't see that. That didn't happen. You know, they made it up. They made it up to justify the damage they did later. And it's quite shocking that, you know, something hasn't been done about that before. You know, it's four years later and still nobody's been you know, held to account. It's shocking. Thank you, Hamish.